Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the after hours market right now, because obviously NVIDIA just reported earnings. I'm fixing to show that to you right now because they are absolutely crushing it. And obviously during the day we were red, shocker there. There comes the market reversal about at the end of the day somewhat to bring us somewhat back halfway. But NVIDIA, let me just show you this first and I'll tell you why. Sitting there, this is actually older, right? 350, it's sitting over 360 right now. So we'll be obviously open at an all time high tomorrow, assuming this is gonna hold, cause they're gonna say AI about a thousand times on the call. But more importantly, what you're looking at here is, the biggest thing is Nvidia has reported revenue between six to $8 billion over the last two years, right? They just said next quarter they're going to bring in a revenue of $11 billion. That's above expectations of $7 billion. So that pump most likely will definitely continue coming tomorrow. And I think AMD holders need to buy NVIDIA a beer or something because obviously you can see where they're at. Post-market riding this wave up, even though it's not their earnings call, it doesn't matter. And most all semiconductors most likely we'll see a move up and with especially amd because right now what's going to do is going to push it right past our supply zone into this little gap area right here so you're definitely going to see this move up probably in the 124 125 if this market continues to go higher for sure and semiconductors obviously you know seem to be doing that and of course nvidia holders and any semiconductors are happy as can be but shorts whoo got absolutely smoked man even more than they've already done they've already lost billions if i told you they just lost a whole lot more. Now, when we look at the rest of the market, obviously what happened today, the market sold off, is waiting on Fed minutes to come out. I don't know what they really expected it was gonna say, but really in a nutshell, so you don't have to read the whole boring thing. All they said was they're kind of split on whether they should do a rate hike in June, well, you know, and so whether or not they're gonna pause or not. Some are kind of you know skeptical about going on and doing any more rate hikes right now. They kind of want to see you know, how this is gonna play out and stuff. And then some say, you know what, we might need to do at least one or two more rate hikes because obviously inflation is still high, employment is still high as can be, people's uh, you know paychecks are still going up and stuff, and that's not helping in their eyes. And so there, there's the minutes, right? There's none of this, oh, we're going to cut or anything like that going on. So you know, so the market was kind of like a really didn't react to it that much at all. And so, we, but we did get a, a technical bounce. And as you can see right here, what happened on the S&P was it hit that brick wall called the 410 level after gapping down this morning and leaving another gap to get filled and stuff, which I'm trying to think, we broke through it a little bit right there from what, the 10th to the 15th. I mean, we kind of broke and then came right back up to it though. But we really hadn't been down below the 410 level significantly for it seems like quite a while now so that's a tough one to get through it's a huge demand zone right and of course if we broke that what would happen it all of a sudden put that big gap in play right and the bulls do not want that right so obviously algos are kicking in like crazy to keep us above that 410 level uh, to keep this rally going and stuff and because of what nvidia did and what semiconductors probably will do tomorrow we'll see you can you know, push up and probably going to fill that gap right above us right there that was left there today and the iwm is kind of a different story right it doesn't have an nvidia in its index okay so it gapped down this morning after hitting that wall yesterday we talked about the big supply zone and it was the 50 moving average it actually saved this index today because it just traveled once it hit it it just traveled right along uh this uh 50 moving average right here for the daily and so again tomorrow we'll see how we open up because a lot of money is gonna be flying into semiconductors which is on the spy and the queues but you know iwm like the other indexes just doesn't have that one stock or two stocks or 10 stocks that matter which can you know hold it up and again, it's been one, two, this is the third time we come into that wall of supply right there. So we'll have to see if we close the gap, continue to move up. And before we continue, guys, if you get anything out of this, please hit that like, subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And think about sharing the video. And if you like the content, think about subscribing. Because again, it is important for this rally to continue. If that's what it is, small caps, micro caps have to participate. They have in every other single one, you know, but they have to do it on this one. Now looking at some stocks like Tesla, for example, obviously this one right here gapped down this morning like all the rest of them did, but it ran into what? A nice demand zone, all right? And as soon as it hit it, it did, it is bounced right back up to the 180s, got above that trend line again. So if we come in the green tomorrow, you can guarantee that gap is going to completely fill, uh, which it did not. It looks like the MACD on the hourly is trying to curl over. RSI got above 50. Again, people are looking at 220, 240 on this one. I think if NVIDIA 
rides away tomorrow. Tesla's going to ride and ride along with it. We just got to see if we can get past the 190 to 200 uh, barrier, which has just been a beast for this stock. And, you know, looking at Apple after that double top, we came down. Now you look, you got a double bottom right here. We look at one to try to fill the gap. The bulls will not let it fill that gap. And again, if it starts to sell off, which most likely won't happen tomorrow now, we'll have to see. You know, it'll probably fill the gap pretty quickly, actually. I think that's what's going to happen, which actually be the best thing for it is to fill the gap and then start to move back up. But again, bulls don't want to, or the bears want to see that happen. The bulls do not want to see that happening. And, you know, look at Amazon. It actually had a green day today. One of the few mega caps that actually did. It's heading back up to that supply zone again. And if it can just launch off that volume shelf to the right right there and get going, this one will absolutely move up because the quant funds are absolutely buying it up. And this rally is funny. And I just put out a video for the members about quant funds and things like that. I call them quant funds. You may call them quaint funds, but um, however you want to pronounce it. And because that's what's really helping drive this up and stuff. But it's actually this rally, uh, even though we've been read uh, in the last couple of days, is right in the face of things that should be slowing it down, right? It should, you know, the market should be heading down according to these things, but it's just not, right? And what I'm talking about here is, you know, this is in no certain order, but, you know, you got HYG, which is high yield corporate bonds, which, you know, for basically the whole month of May has been heading down while the market has been heading up in May, right? And so, you know, that was kind of telling us how you need to sell off because this is smart money. Normally, when this usually gives us kind of a warning ahead of times, a lot of times, and this is exactly what it was doing this time, right? But, you know, this whole NVIDIA news and everything else, semiconductors, we'll see if the market shifts to heading back up. But, you know, you got that. Then you got the dollar, which has just been a beast in May. I mean, it's just been heading straight up. Boom, look at that. For almost, uh, you know, basically two, two and a half weeks now. And usually the market will head down, but, uh, it's just been going right in the face of it and you can see it's hitting a crucial level right here at 103 you know this has been kind of tough for it to get through in the past if it does then we got 105.50 to look at but the question is if it does continue up will the market continue up in the face of this or if the dollar starts to sell off you can guarantee the market is definitely going to be going up it's like rocket fuel right then the other thing this came out today i mean m2 money supply is at the most negative it has ever been Again, my argument is when you're coming off the most positive you've ever seen, double any other point in time in history, then really, truly, don't you expect the biggest negative number ever? But that's another thing that, you know, economists and other people, uh, big numbers guys fight on. But that came out. So, yeah, I mean, is it good? Probably not. But we'll have to see how it makes out. And then, of course, you know, you got your new highs, new lows, right? And so you can see back here when we were falling, obviously we had a whole lot of new lows versus new highs and then it started to cool down. You can see back here when we were running up and stuff, a lot of new highs versus new lows. And then this is basically 2023. You can see in the first part of the month, we had a lot of new highs going on. Then starting in March, we had more new lows than new highs, right? Which might shock a lot of people. And then you see that little blip there to the very far right. You can see we're starting to go back in the positive. And a lot of this has to do with simply the fact that, yes, it's the, the 10 stocks that are making up like 80% of the move and stuff like that, like NVIDIA is going to make up even more of that move. I mean, it's approaching a, I think tomorrow to open up like 900 billion. So it's approaching the trillion dollar club, right? Which there's not a lot of stocks at trillion dollars. So, you know, and like I was saying, IWM just doesn't have those kind of stocks that are going to prop it up and send it to the moon and things like that, which is why it trades in what I like to call, you know, boxes, but ranges like all the time, right? For months on end. And so, but Spy and Q's, they, they do have Apple and NVIDIA and Microsoft and all that stuff. So, you know, that, that's just a different story. But again, we've never seen a real rally without small caps and micro caps actually participating. And some you're seeing that uh, for sure and stuff. But again, all this is happening in the face of all this stuff. So if the dollar sells off for sure, oh yeah, the market is going to just continue to head higher and we'll finally break the 4,200 and probably stay above 4,200. But if the dollar continues to rally higher uh, and, and you see yields going higher too, then we'll see if the market's going to react to that or not. Now, when it comes to earnings tomorrow, because you saw today what happened, you actually had, unlike Tuesday, retailers do really well. Abercrombie and Fitch is up like 20%, Kohl's is up 10%. Uh, and so they did really well. And tomorrow you're going to have Best Buy, Dollar Tree, Burlington, uh, Decker's Gap, and so um, Ulta, which is the, the makeup stuff. 
uh, reporting tomorrow, so we'll see what they got to say. TD Bank, we'll see what they got going on. Man, they're building a lot of those places in Florida, by the way, especially in my area. Uh, Costco, I almost forgot the, the most important retailer, right? Uh, that's going to be a big one. Uh, Autodesk, and so, you know, Marvel's another semiconductor. We'll see how it's going into earnings after coming off this NVIDIA earnings, which, you know, it just seems to be the boat that lifts all ships, right? And then we will have some economic data before the market opens, which, you know, could affect the market for sure. I mean, you're going to have continuous jobless claims, core PCE prices, quarter over quarter. It's going to be an estimate. Corporate profits, GDP growth rate, quarter over quarter. Expecting a big drop right here. So if that comes in higher than expected, that's more rocket fuel right there. If it comes in worse, man, we'll have to see if the market ignores it or not, right? And then you have GDP sales, quarter over quarter. Expecting a huge increase on this. Uh, initial jobless claims. Uh, sitting at 245k so they're actually expecting an increase on that one you know we love the jobless claims data right when it comes out so you know we'll be looking at that you'll have some kansas city fed composite index the manufacturing and so they're not expecting it to be as bad as it was the last time it came out it was a disaster but it the it seems like the, this kind of data doesn't really affect this market right and i think um when the members see what i show them today they can understand why what, what what's happening and stuff and everything so you gotta gotta fight the algos that's the way it is and so, you know, anyway, let me know what you think about tomorrow. Cause I, I've been looking in the comments. I think a lot of people expect the NVIDIA to, to go down. And, but no, not the case at all. So we'll see if it opens up 20% <laughs> higher tomorrow or not and charges toward the 400 mark or whatever. But, you know, at least one thing I'll say about it, at least they, they're projecting really good earnings, right? And so you start to back up, you know, the move stuff a little more. I mean, don't get me wrong. The, the valuation is totally stretched out, you know, uh, unbelievable the fact that what's even crazier though is how the other semiconductors are following it up but they don't really do what nvidia does which is kind of interesting so you know but what you're seeing is a lot of people are looking at semiconductors like mu and amd and stuff and they're they're a lot cheaper so they're hey let me try to get in on this one right here now that nvidia's had this gigantic run right and the other ones aren't and try to break them out and that's why you see a lot of semiconductors breaking resistance now uh, and moving up and stuff. So, you know, that's just kind of the way the game works. But anyway, hope you got some out of it, guys. Hit the like, subscribe, if you did. Think about sharing the video. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a great night, and I will see you tomorrow for probably going to be a fun, uh, volatile day tomorrow. Yeah. So have a good one, guys. Dude.